Hi, I have got a couple of vessels here that I have made and people have asked me how to get started doing their own. So I thought I would do just a quick little video. This is not a pro vessel making video because these are the first two that I made. I made one more that wasn't coiled, but these are the first two coiled ones I have made and I am maybe a little addicted to them. This one was made entirely with cordage that I made myself from all those threads that we save. You know, you get those just pile of threads and I make them into cordage and then I made this vessel. There is a video, I will link to that down in the description on how to make that. This one is made entirely from knots. I had strips of fabric that I had made knots into and then I did my basket that way. Now, you will see that these are so far from perfect. If you want to see some videos that have got some perfect basket you know, basketry ideas, go look at the ones that are rope coils. They, they were too perfect for me because I knew I couldn't be consistently perfect. But if this was a piece of white rope and they take the fabric and they wrap it around the rope as they stitch it. And number one, that seemed like way too fiddly time for me. And number two, I knew I wasn't going to get that perfect thing. And number three, I didn't want the perfect look. I wanted the crazy Susan look. So that's what I've got. My stitches do not line up, but I've got lots of room in here that I could go in. I could take my blue cordage now. Ooh, I'm liking that idea. And I could stitch that around it. I could do all sorts of things to decorate it. This one you can see a little bit more where they lined up, but not so much. Now I could take my, my needle and do embroidery on here, and I did play around with that a little bit. But enough of that. Let's start a new vessel. And I got a little scrap here. And I kind of just want to start all right I want to get a coil going that's all it is really and so I'm just gonna kind of you could start with a knot I have done them with that where I've started with a knot but I just wanted to get a little circle going now if you're working with basketry they have this thing called the magic circle where the ropes slide and I don't find that works quite as easily for me on fabric probably because I'm just not as experienced at it uh, so I'll try and remember to put a link to a good video on that but I'm just going to kind of squish it now what you're seeing on the top is what you're going to see when you look down in the vessel and on the bottom is what you're going to see when you turn the vessel over I'm not really that worried about it when I get started. When you get to the end, when you're all done with your project, you can always put something else on the bottom. And I had a little snafu before I started recording this video, and I was thinking, ooh, it might be kind of nice to create a really um, beautiful stitched medallion of fabric just at the very, just at the tiny, tiny center. You know, so picture right here, if I had something that was just really beautifully stitched and then I could start doing my coiling around that so I might do that for a future project now this one these are just strips of fabric I think this is an old sheet that I dyed with a watered down acrylic paint so it's still very nice and soft to stitch in and because I am doing art just because I'm not going to worry these little threads that come out I'm going to embrace them because I, this is going to be a big vessel or basket, whichever you want to call it. Um, this is going to be really big. Well, it's going to be however, this is the bottom. The bottom is going to be completely this color, and then I have some different fabric where I'm going to come up the sides, and I'm going to combine fabric and knots. And the reason I want to do a large one is this is going to be the C. And I want to get a large, basically, form that I can then decorate. Now right now I'm just whip stitching, but really what I should be doing, okay, I'm shooting on myself, is a buttonhole stitch. Now if you are a masket, a masket, a master basketry person, um, you just skip right along because you're not going to learn anything here. You're just going to listen to a Susan ramble. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I have not done videos for a while. I've just been doing my regular weekly live streams, and this was a good time to come on and get back into the swing of doing videos as I try and ponder things. And by things, I mean the nature of being an artist and social media. 
You know, sometimes I'm wondering, do we all try too hard? Are we trying too hard to be all the things to all the people? Because we can't. If you do that, you spread yourself so thin that you're not being really good at anything and you're not connecting with the people that you want to connect with. I am, um, I want to be more active on YouTube again because YouTube is really what got me started. I really enjoy Instagram because I'm inspired over there. I'm playing on TikTok, but I'm not having a good time over there, so I have a feeling that's probably going to go away. And then, of course, I really enjoy Facebook. Um, I've got my Facebook group over there, and I enjoy seeing what people are doing over there. But, you know, it it's a lot to be an artist in this time of our lives because, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have all this online social media that, that had us measuring ourselves and our self-worth against what other people were doing. You know, and I don't think you ever outgrow that. I mean, I'm 64 years old, and I still do that. And I get so mad at myself for doing that. So mad. But that's the way it is, I guess. That's the way it is with me. Well, now, you know, Susan just figured out that really I have my little medallion. Look at that. So I'm going to make a decision about how I want this medallion to look. This is the very center of my basket. And normally I would have added another piece on there, but I realized as I was stitching and yakking at the same time, I'm just going to go all the way around again and get, yeah, and I might even turn it over when I'm done. Yeah. And I'll show you what I mean, really. I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm trying to do all this without editing it because my computer died a couple weeks ago and I'm still getting it all back to normal again and you would think it would be an easy thing just to reinstall all the programs but it's not um, my husband was able to get all my files back so that was a really big deal but I just need to take some time and do the rest of the stuff for me get my graphics programs back in and it's just it's just a pain when your computer dies Again, technology, social media, technology, we've become so dependent on them. So normally you would not go around nearly this many times, but I've decided I want to make this my thing. <laughs> my thing here. So yeah, it's, it's funny how we let all these expectations um, that we, we build up in our own brains. And you know, nobody else is thinking about us nearly as much as we're thinking that they're thinking about us. It's really crazy. And I just need to kind of slap myself upside the head sometimes and say, come on, Susan, forget about it. The whole point of making art is to make art. For me, for me, you're mo you, you might have totally different reasons. My reason for making art is to ultimately... Be happy. That's all I want to do. I want to be happy. I want to create art every day. I want to share my art as much as I can. And I want to inspire other people to make art and share their art. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. The bonus, okay, if I sell something I create, it's a bonus. This is not even a regular buttonhole stitch. This is so wonky. I'm probably making regular stitchers go, oh no, I want to claw my eyes out because look at the mess she's doing. But this is me getting back to making videos, getting back to stitching on camera that's not in my live stream. I'm just going to whip stitch around here. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm just going to kind of... I just want to make this really kind of a neat looking medallion. And I'm probably still going to end up coming back here and covering it with something, but that's okay. I just kind of want to make it so it's even stitched on both sides. It looks like I'd gotten kind of heavy on one side. But I will show you how I add fabric. Uh, normally what you would be doing is adding fabric when you still have a little bit of a tail to tuck it in. So we're going to get creative. We're going to get creative. You know, it sort of feels like doing my very first video years ago. I had no idea what I was doing, what I was going to say. Can I get this to I want to get on that little hump right there. Okay. I think I'm okay with that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the bottom. That'll focus because that doesn't look so pretty. Eh, maybe that'll be the bottom. We'll just leave it. All right. So we're going to take another piece of fabric. 
And I'm just going to literally start stitching it. And I'm going to twist it because I want to get those raw edges in all the different places. And again, I think when you first start doing this at the bottom, for me, because I haven't done enough of these, it's really hard to get everything to line up. But once you get them going and you get a nice ring, then your stitch can just kind of slide between um, the fabric and the row before. And I'll see if I can show you what I mean here. So your stitches kind of start to go in between each thing. So you're not stitching through the actual fabric, although you can do that. You can absolutely do that. But right now, because I made that really hard medallion on the bottom, I'm kind of going through the fabric on the bottom. And I'm going to tell myself it's okay. It's sort of like stitching through a knot because I didn't leave myself any room. So you're getting to see all the lessons I am relearning because it's been a while since I started a bottom. And isn't that why you watch YouTube videos so you can see, okay, somebody else messed something up there. Let's see how they fixed it. I was reading something about um, perfection the other day, and I won't know if I'll get the quote exactly right, but it's like you don't have to be perfect to inspire other people because what people want is to be inspired by seeing how you deal with your imperfections. And I like that idea. Because, boy, I know I'm not perfect. I know that the art that I do is far from perfect. And I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm just going to keep twisting this as I go. And really, it gets easier the larger this gets. It gets much easier. And I got to where, you know, I was doing this in front of the TV and not worrying about, you know, my rows quite so much. And you just, you, it just goes. It just goes. And when I get around to this, I'll just be able to tuck that in and you won't even see it. And then when you decide that you want to, you know, your bottom has gotten as large as you want it to go or as much of the material that you've allocated for it. Got to get in between. There we go. Um, then you just start increasing your round and going up. But I'm a long way from there. What I'll do is I will uh, do a little bit more here. And then I'll do the rest off camera and I'll come back as I'm going to change fabric colors and increase. Okay, so my little tail is there and as I'm just twisting, it's just going to hide. I'll get to the end of this thread and then show you where I'm at. So see, you can see how it, this has the potential to be very evenly spaced by people that are super experienced at it. I don't care how many years I did it. I don't think that's just, it's just not my nature <laughs> to be able to do stuff like that. So I'm just going to accept that about myself. It's like, this is me and it's okay. But I do want to show you how one of the nice things about being able to nod off in here is you can hide all that stuff. All right, so I'm done with this thing of thread. So I'm just going to come back the bottom here and just make a little knot all right so I got my knot and then I'm just going to let it go in there you know where you can hide it within the fabric 
All right, so there's my bottom. And again, I can come back later and put something over the bottom if I don't like it like that, but I will probably leave it. And there's the beginnings of this. And I'm going to just keep stitching around and you just keep going and going and going until you get the bottom as large as you want and then you start coming up the side. So I'll come back and show you when I got the bottom done and I'm ready to add some more.